Hello, dear participants. As an interpreter, I'm speaking on behalf of Dr. Alexa Rokin, PhD and Executive Director of Biakovant Company and the head of the National Ayurvedic Medical Association of Russia. Today we're having the second lecture dedicated to the course on a topic of matching of basic notion of constitution in Ayurveda and TCM. Neither in Ayurveda nor in TCM you will find the word constitution as it is a modern word uh, for a new generation to be able to get the ideas of the ancient sciences. As a rule by constitution are meant certain features. In Ayurveda it is usually a specific combination of Mahadoshas. Today we are going to discuss the second constitution type. As you know there are ten constitution types in Ayurveda and nine types in TCM. In TCM the second type is called emptiness of yang. In Ayurveda people of a second type have a dual constitution vata kapha in the way that in a period of changing of seasons this combination of doshas would remain stable with vata in a leading position. Vata kapha in a normal state won't bring any troubles to a person though it would denote predisposition to certain diseases. It is very important to mention that there are two factors for this combination that are crucial. First one is a weak Agni and the second one is the presence of Ama as a result of the weak Agni. These two factors cause the main problems for this constitution type. Constitution is a complex of stable morphological, anatomical as well as physiological elements of the reflection of influence of the environment on the body and of course of uh, psychological features of a person. These elements form a layer pie that, we'll call, that we will call Vikriti and through Vikriti we try to identify, identify Prakriti of a person. Constitution is being formed influenced both by innate and acquired factors. Modern physiology claims that innate and acquired factors both have 50% share in forming a constitution. Why it is important to know the constitution type of a patient? If we know the nature of a person we can understand what tendencies take place in a patient in terms of development of different pathogenic states According to this analysis, you can perform a certain correction of the pathogenic state providing a preventive treatment that should play the main role in treatment in TCM, Ayurveda, Tibetan medicine and other practices. Ten Ayurvedic types of constitution are represented by pairs formed of different doshas. On a slide you can see this set of dual subtypes. There are nine of them. And the first type is Tridosh type. Parity chart. A vata type with low ojas matches emptiness of chi. Pita type is connected with axis of yang. And kapha type corresponds the accumulation of heat and moist in TCM. We can say that types that we see in between as a combination of doshas with one of them dominating, dominating represent peculiar clinical morphological functional features in a person. As I already mentioned today, we're going to talk about young emptiness. What we mean by young emptiness? One of the main features of this state is a weak agni or tejas. By the word, by the words vata kapha in excess, we mean that domination of certain gunas brings agni down and enhances processes connected with producing of ama or toxins. Emptiness of yang is a complex of constitutional peculiarities formed as a result of the lack of yang or low agni. This state manifests itself through complex certain symptoms. In Chinese medicine this state is usually denoted as an empty cold syndrome. Here you can see combination of gunas or prime elements of nature in interaction of two mahadoshas when a dual constitution vata kapha is being formed. The thing is, when two doshas are interacting, there is a certain affinity of prime elements or bhutas. When, kapha, when vata kapha type is being form, formed, bhutas that would be first in line are akasha and jala bhutas, or ether and water. Dominating quality of ether is cold. The more ether there is in the body, the more cold it would possess. At the same time, water would cause a domination of phlegm in the body. As in vata kapha combination, there is a domination of ether and water. We get this formula named an excessively cold phlegm. 
Such elements as oil and air also take place in this combination, but in a smaller proportion. When you carry an assessment using the Vedapal software, you would pay attention to a Pancha Mahabhu tab to see that what prime elements are dominant. In a state of excess of Vata Kapha, you would see domination of ether or Akasha Bhuta and water or Jala Bhuta. In this bar chart, you see a classic example of this state. As a rule, the level of fire in this combination would be low. Now let's turn to a clinical example. The practitioner who told me this story has more than 20 years of a clinical experience. He had this patient, a woman who lived in a block near his office. One day they arranged an appointment, but before the meeting she called the doctor and said she wanted to cancel because the weather was chilly and she claimed she would feel extreme discomfort going outside. And it happened several times. Each time they arranged an appointment, she cancelled because of a cold weather, and only after the weather had stabilized to 20 degrees Celsius, they finally met. The main complaint of the patient was that she was exhausted of a constant feeling of cold. The woman claimed that it didn't matter how warm it was inside the place, she would feel chilly anyway. She had an air conditioner at her apartment that heated the temperature up to 25 degrees and more, but it wasn't enough to warm the patient. In case, in case I eat cold food, said the woman, I get horrible consequences. My body responses with utter discomfort and pain. This is a classic clinical state of a low level of young energy. If you deal with patients suffering from excess of vata kapha, you'd hear the similar complaints. Now let's discuss why this syndrome is called a syndrome of an empty cold. From the point of view of traditional Chinese medicine, the normal situation is when yin and yang are balanced. In case of yang deficiency, there would be a lack of fire, as you can see here. Thus we get an artificial, artificially made syndrome of domination of yin, domination of cold. As this situation develops on the background of emptiness of yang, we start calling the state an empty cold syndrome. In other words, this cold domination forms not because of the excess of yin, but because of the lack of yang. Manifestation of syndrome of empty cold. First sign of empty cold is a digestion disorder. Carrying out an examination of such a patient in order to identify the problems of uh, gastrointestinal tract, you would find a white coating on the tongue during lingual examination. You can have an experiment and check if you have a white coating on your tongue or not. White coating would be an indicator of presence of ama in the body, and methods of removing ama would be the very methods of treatment of empty cold. If you don't correct the low level of digestion fire on this stage, unfortunately the lack of fire would increase and cause more serious problems with health. The next symptom would be reproductive disorders or fertility problems both in men and women. And the last symptom in this state of excess of ama and lack of fire in lungs will form a tendency to atopic reactions. By atopic tendency we mean an allergic tendency to diseases of a bronchi lung system such as an allergic rhinitis, bronchi spasms of an allergic etiology and as an ultimate result one can get asthma. To get a meaning of Yang let's turn to its hieroglyph which as an image has a deep philosophical meaning. According to modern specialists, Yang hieroglyph consists of two parts. One part denotes a hill, another part denotes the sun. Together, this two, two these parts mean the sun side of the hill, the side that is always warmed up well. Ayurvedic equivalent of this notion in Sanskrit is Agni. You can see this notion, Agni or Tejas, written in Sanskrit on the right side of the screen. Only Agni can change the state of matter from one to another. The main quality of Bhuta Agni is a quality of transformation. Low level of fire causes issues with transformation on different levels, starting with cellular fire, coming up to digestion fire and ending up with the fire of mind. Fire was the third 
prime element in the creation of the world. Fire happens only in the presence of akasha and air, because the very movement of wind causes friction, and friction produces fire. If you remember combination of prime elements in Vata Kapha constitution, you'll see that there is ether and phlegm, but there is also the lack of wind, that is why there cannot be enough of heat. Now we're going to talk about the reasons leading to emptiness of yang. The first reason, according to Ayurvedic specialist, is the innate deficiency of yang or agni. Constitution of parents and their health in the moment of conceiving, especially the fact that they may suffer from yang deficiency, creates a possibility that their child would get an empty cold syndrome. From from the point of view of genetics, there is a certain combination of genes that are transmitted by principle of domination that cause weakness of metabolic processes. The innate deficiency of young can also be a result of a premature or late birth or a pathological course of pregnancy. pregnancy. The second reason of emptiness of young is an improper diet. Even if the person has a genetic predisposition to emptiness of young, following a diet that is formed in accordance with his or her constitution type, the person would compensate the lack of agni, getting rid of manif manifestation of this problem. If the person tends to eat improper food, namely the food that has bitter taste and cold energy, or the food that doesn't have a sufficient amount of calories, or the food that is not of a needed protein, vitamin, mineral composition from the point of view of a certain constitution type, it will provoke the deficiency of Agni. One of the factors of obtaining emptiness of Young syndrome that stands alone is an excessive sexual activity. In case of excessive sexual activity, the energy is being wasted and vast. The deficiency of energy the deficiency of energy can provoke manifestations of the lack of agni or yang deficiency. In TCM, special attention is paid to external factors or environment. As the long-term influence of a cold pathogenic wind can cause the deficiency of agni. And it wouldn't matter whether the person has a predisposition to emptiness or of yang or not. People having a genetic predisposition to emptiness of yang would would only have this state developing faster. According to scientific research held in Siberian Department of the Academy of Medical Sciences on the acclimatization of people of Caucasoid race, it was established that first, first of all, the people who have the corresponding genetic predispositions would fail to adopt to severe climatic conditions of Siberia. The next reason is aging of the body, which is an inevitable process. Aging would gradually reduce the amount of the young beginning in the body, producing a tendency to manda agni or low digestion fire state. There are also certain medicines that remove heat and toxins from the body. Those medicines have a very strong cooling effect. The excessive intake of such remedies would lower agni, especially in people who initially had this predisposition. Those were the main causes of the empty cold syndrome. Uh, and the people can acquire during a lifespan. For some people it would be a short-term state that has a temporary character. For other people it would be stable and prolonged. Clinical manifestation of emptiness of energy. The first sign of empty cold would be a fear of cold. You would hear complaints from your patient that he or she is afraid of cold. It is very easy to identify empty cold in a person. Such a person would have cold hands, prefer very hot, stimulating beverages. As a result of constant feeling of cold, those people would seem kind of frozen, slow and sleepy. Another two makers of empty cold in a person would be pale face and dark circles under eyes. People with empty cold suffer from excessive hair loss. They also feel discomfort in the abdominal area as a result of digestion disorder. Even though vata is a dominant component in vata-kapha combination, in such people kapha make, may take its effect and cause slackening in metabolic processes and as a result one would get a problem with the excessive weight. As for psycho-emotional state, uh, the cold phlegm would create a tendency to introversion of a person. As these people suffer from the lack of fire, they always try to keep the energy and seem quiet, depressed and shut. 
When examining the tongue of the patient with empty cold, you'd find signs of malabsorption, such as prints of teeth on the rims of the tongue and moisty capsule coating of a white color. The empty cold syndrome start manifesting itself with long-term or chronic catheteral diseases. One of the main features of empty cold would be a prolonged character of the disease that it, that it causes the digestion disorder. Once during a workshop on a pulse diagnostic in his Ayurvedic Institute, Dr. Vasantlad also carried out a lingual diagnostics of the attendants. About one third of the presented people got Vishama Manda Agni diagnosis. If you don't detect empty cold through prolonged catheteral diseases and weak digestion at an early stage, it may develop to predisposition to infertility, infertility and impotence. Now let's discuss cardiointervallographic markers of emptiness of young. When dealing with the empty cold syndrome, the tab that you sh should start the assessment with working on Vedapal's program is a spectrum tab. The power of spectrum, which is denoted through TP index for people with empty cold, would, would be not less than 100 I'm sorry, 1500 milliseconds squared that shows a substantial amount of life energy. You would think that it is a good sign and thing, things are not that bad, but it also has a reason. As this person has two spectrum ranges dominating, first is a very low frequency range that you see in a blue color in this graph and high frequ frequency range that you see in a green color. Only because of the high rate of these indices total power of a spectrum shows a high level of basic energy. It is interesting that in spectrum of people with empty cold, high frequency index would always be higher than low frequency index. It means that the system of mobilization of energy gives way to energy saving system which provides manifestations of inertia, stagnation and heaviness. Another sign of empty cold is that low frequency index would be not higher than 20%. You should make sure that it is not an artifact but a reproductible marker. Another tab the specialist should analyze is an indices of the time analysis tab in histogram section. Even having vata domination in the constitution combination, you'd notice that histogram has drifted to the right. As it is pointed out in our seminars, where we in details discuss different indices and histograms, in Vata Domination, the histogram bar that you see here in a blue color usually drifts to the left, and Kapha Domination. In Vata Domination, the histogram bar that you see here in a blue color usually drifts to, to the left. In Kapha Domination, the bar would drift to the right. For people with empty cold in vata kapha combination of doshas, the histogram bar would be located in the range of more than 900 milliseconds. One of the criteria that should be analyzed is a mode amplitude, which is shown through the height of the tallest bar. As a rule for such patients, mode amplitude won't go higher than 50%. Now let's see what markers we may find in the integral indices tab. First of all, it is a tension index that would be higher than 250 international units. An average level of health in such people in case they don't have any acute diseases manifesting, manifesting critically would stay in a wide normal range from 50 to 100, where values from 75 to 100 is an ideal norm and range from 50 to 75 is an average value for most of the people, especially those who live in a city. High values of adaptation price index uh, is not typical for this constitution. We would find it in a yellow zone, in a range from 15 to 30, and say that probably there is an induction of some pathogenic processes in the person that require adaptation resources. As for speed of biological aging, it is typical for such people to drift to a blue zone, denoting inertia of mo mobilization of energy. Low Yang or Low Agni can manifest through different clinical states. 
If we are talking about gastrointestinal tract from the perspective of traditional Chinese medicine, emptiness of yang manifests itself through weakness of stomach, yang and spleen yang. In this case, by spleen we mean meridians of spleen and pancreas, pancreas and talking about weakness of spleen in the context of gastrointestinal tract disorders we mean weakness of pancreas. One of the special thing about Nidana tap that it differs from indices or, or balance of Mahadosha's taps as it doesn't work as a photographic snapshot. It requires a reproduction of results in dynamics as reproduction of the tendencies in a person can only be carried out in dynamics. In indices tap, for example, you can get highly reproducible result at one snapshot. In fact, Nidana tap fixes an unstoppable fluctuating flow of energy. So, to make sure that you fixed the state that is reproducible, you should carry out series of assessments in dynamics. An ideal situation is when the specialist also has a telemetry module. In this case, doctor suggests to a patient that before starting the treatment, they should make a series of assessment to see the state in dynamics. The patient would carry out additional assessments at home, at time stated by the specialist, and send it to doctor using synchronization tab. tab. This dynamic way of assessing of the patient would give a highly correct interpretation of the results provided by the Nidana module. Typical manifestations of weakness of yang of stomach and spleen would be depression of dosha called samana vata. Samana vata is responsible for, for neural regulation processes in the proximal gastrointestinal tract, first of all of stomach and intestines. One of the most essential signs of weakness of yang of stomach and spleen would be pachaka pita depression because pachaka pita is a fire itself. Low level of pachaka pita indicates a low level of agni or yang and if this state can be reproducted and it is followed by specific clinical symptoms, you can be sure that you are dealing with empty code syndrome. Additionally, there can be ranjaka pita depression connected with a fire or of liver and strengthening of klidaka kapha. Klidaka kapha is a phlegm in the stomach that also brings down the fire. As a substance, Klidaka Kapha is responsible for a very important function of protection, but being in excess, it causes pathogenic state of Agni. Let's see what subdoshas are involved, involved when it comes to weakness of young of lungs. You'd find tension of Prana Vata that reflects tension of Prana Vaha Shrotas, or channels of the breathing system. As a rule, you'd detect lowering of Udana Vata, it is responsible for the processes of breathing. People suffering from weakness of young of lungs would often take a deep sigh, which would be a marker of certain hypoxia of lungs as a result of weakness of channel of lungs. As one of the locations of Avalambaka Kapha is lungs, weakness of young of lungs would influence this subdosha. It is important to point out that when we are talking of weakness of kidneys, we do not mean weakness of functioning of kidneys in terms of water-salt metabolism, but in terms of reproductive and gynecological problems. What will happen with subdoshas responsible for gynecological disorders? First of all, you'd find lowering of ranjaka pita that stands for steroid hormones. So we will get disorders in steroid-dependent processes of the female reproductive system. So, lowering of Ranjaka Pitta in combination with increasing of Avalambaka Kapha and changes in channels in 8th and 1st channels of kidneys is a marker of weakness of young of kidneys. If you'll check characteristics of pulse of a patient, with the empty cold syndrome, you'll find that for people of Vata Kapha constitution, cardio intervalogram will always be in a range higher than 900 milli milliseconds. As for people of Vata type, it is usually in a range of 500 milliseconds. Hamsa pulse of, of Kapha and Sarpa pulse of Vata would be lowered to the low amplitude fluctua fluctuations, which is typical neither for pure Hamsa type as it is usually higher, nor for pure sarpa type, as it is usually lower. 
Vega or speed of pulse as a rule is situated in a range lower than 70 beats per minute, which is not typical for people of pure Vata type. Kaphal phlegm is an inertia and stagnation influence Vyana Vata that speeds up the pulse. So the pulse rate will be lower than seven, 70 beats per minute. Tala would be of a fluent, moderate character. We also inserted some additional parameters that would that can show you the certain nuances that may not correspond to the constitution type, which would mean that you didn't take into account some important factors in assessment or vigrity. As for Agni, the tape will identify it as Vishama or unstable and Manda or weak. The lack of yang will has its reflection in the state of bioenergy of different organs. Total energy level is going to be lower than 30-50%. If yang deficiency ricochets to gastrointestinal tract, the level of energy there will be lower than 4%. As we know, state of norm is 8%. Level of energy under 4% is considered as low. Level of bioenergy in lungs can vary depending on a stage of the disease. In acute stage there will be tension, in chronic state it will be low, lower than 4%. In reproductive system level of bioenergy of kidneys and endocrine system would be also lower than 4%. Cold in the uterus can cause infertility and cold in the adobe of semen can cause impotence as it is an obstacle for activity of male reproduction cells. Cold in the uterus can cause problems with conceiving and if the woman is already preg pregnant she may have troubles such as miscarriage. For men it first of all influences the fertilizing ability of sperm. What indicators of cold in reproductive system will be detected by Veda pulse? Here is a real example of the empty cold syndrome in reproductive system. You can see that there is a great tension in the channel of kidneys. And the first thing that we may start to worry about is that we have problems with kidneys, such as nephritis, paleonephritis, glomerulonephritis, but there also would be a combination of remarkable characteristics that we should pay attention to. You can see that there is also a slackening of energy in the meridian of the ternary heater. There would also be a certain tension in the spleen, pancreas and lungs meridians. If we checked Hatu, we would see tension in Shukra Arthavat Hatu, the tissue that is connected with quality of sperm. The device won't give you an information if there is an empty cold syndrome or not. You would have to detect it through the presence of certain characteristics of the 10th and 8th channel channels and combinations with the state of Shukra Arthavat Hatu. In woman's body there are two phases of the cycle. First one is an estrogenic phase and you can see it in red line in the picture. The second phase is a progesterone phase which is of a blue color in the picture. In changing of the phases of the cycle there is a remark remarkable outburst of the luteinizing hormone in the woman's body. This hormone starts the process of ovulation. In women with cold in the uterus, the process of ovulation cannot be started. People of Vata Kapha constitution in excess may have this predisposition. According to statistics, about 5 to 10 percent of women are initially reproductively challenged. It means that they become incapable of conceiving a child, not in the result of some disease, but right after the process of sexual maturation. And if we carry out the research, we would find that the most of them are of Vata Kapha constitution in a state of empty cold. It is pretty much easy to identify cold in the uterus. In the second phase that is called a lutein phase, corpus luteum is to be formed and the concentration of progesterone hormone increases greatly. The urine test of a woman with a cold uter in uterus will show that progesterone didn't go up, which would mean that ovulation hasn't started. 
There are certain points that are helpful in prevention and treatment of cold in reproductive system. First point is Guan Yuan point. It is located on the anterior middle line, three tunes below the navel, and it is considered as projection of the lower heater. It is also called outpost of the prime energy. This point is very effective in strengthening of young of kidneys. It can be influenced not only by classic methods of traditional Chinese medicine, such as acupuncture, but also by Ayurvedic methods, such as basti, when right on the needed area, you place some kind of a reservoir or jar without bottom, and fill with warm, nourishing soil solu oil solution. Thus you get both thermal and pharmacological influence. This method would stimulate blood circulation and you would get hormonal adaptation response from the reproductive system. You can also use physiotherapy, quantum therapy in particular, laser physiotherapy, though it is contraindicated for women who have tendency to development of growths. For such women it is better to avoid magnetic therapy of Veda quantum device. Ayurvedic equivalent of this point is Syria or Amashaya point, which has a very strong harmonizing effect for digestion fire and fire of reproductive system. It is located above the navel area in the middle between the navel and xiphoid process. If you place a jar with oily solution on this point, you would influence Samanavata, Apanavata and Pachakapita subdoshas. Another point that is mentioned in classic tractates of traditional Chinese medicine is San Yin Jiao point or meeting point of three yins. This point is located in the spleen channel. It is situated just above the medial ankle at the posterior edge of tibia. One of the methods of influence is ac acupuncture that would have a very strong restorative effect for the lower heater that is responsible for functioning of the reproductive system and can be helpful in treatment of various gynecological disorders. Now let's talk about pachacapita digestion disorders on the different floors of gastrointestinal tract. Pachacapita on the different floors of gastrointestinal tract is connected with different regulatory systems of the body and different effector components corresponding to this physiological function. On the level of stomach, Pachacapita is connected first of all with hormones controlling the process of secretion of stomach juices, such as for example gastrin, histamine, somatostatin, and stomach juice secretion. And on the level of pancreas, is secretin and cholecystokinin. On the level of gallbladder, it is gall and humoral mechanism of regulation connected with cholecystokinin that is responsible first of all for the release of enzymes of the pancreatic juice affecting all kinds of nutrients as well as, as proteins, fats and carbohydrates. So, if we get digestion disorders connected with young deficiency, it means that we have problems with these very functions that you see in this slide. According to traditional Chinese medicine, one of the indications that person have the empty cold syndrome is that he or she becomes addicted to ginger in any form. Pickled ginger, ginger as a tea additive, various ginger-based sugar candies and so on. There is one recipe that is very easy to make and that has a very strong action of increasing of pachacapita, stimulating agni and yang on the level of stomach and pancreas. The ingredients are pu air tea that is available almost in every supermarket and several slices of the fresh ginger root. Drinking this tea one hour or three minutes before meal, you'd stimulate agni and prevent problems connected with producing of ama. One of the wondrous points that is helpful in empty cold in stomach and pancreas is the center point of stomach and it is located also in the middle line of the, of the interior middle meridial, meridian, four tunes above the navel, navel. Methods of influence of this point would be moxibustion with wormwood cigars or Ayurvedic oil solutions and physiotherapy. Agni deficiency in lungs can cause an allergic rhinitis as a minimum and bronchial asthma as a maximum. 
To people who suffer from seasonal allergic rhinitis, you may recommend the tea that warms up lungs. It contains the fresh ginger root. The ginger root has a spicy taste, sweet secondary taste, and hot energy ushna. It reduces vata kapha and it increases pita. You can see its formula, vata kapha minus pita plus. All the herbs of this formula may be recommended to people with low agni in lungs. This tea also contains the tangerine peel, as it is prescribed according to traditional Chinese recipes. You can see that the tangerine peel reduces kapha greatly. At the same time, it increases pita and neutral for vata. The tangerine peel has bitter and spicy taste and hot energy. This tea also contains licorice. Those who are acquired with Ayurvedic herbs know that licorice increases kapha. You can see it in its formula, pita vata minus kapha plus. And it has a sweet taste, madhura, secondary taste is bitter and its energy is cold. It may seem that licorice is not desirable for cold in lungs, but in this case licorice is used in small proportion. Besides, licorice has a great harmonizing effect in interaction of all the components of the composition. In traditional Chinese medicine, licorice is widely used in herbal compositions as a soothing component for the excessive action of ginger. And the basic component is black tea. This is a classic tea recipe for warming up lungs, removing excessive phlegm from lungs and restoring yang. You can freely use this recipe in case you are not allergic to any of the components. For reproductive system we take ginseng, it reduces vata kapha at the same time it is neutral for pita. Its first taste is spicy, the secondary taste is bitter. Ginseng also has sweet vipak that can manifest itself in prolonged usage. But due to its hot energy, it would, has a great reducing effect for vata and kapha. Another compo component is walnut. The nuts are very oily, which would increase kapha and reduce vata and pita, but this action is balanced by ginger, which is, according to Tibetan practice, is a very herb and a king herb at the same time. It stimulates warming potential of this organ. Let's see how the process of manifestation of allergic reaction happens. After getting inside the human body, the allergen is assimilated by the antigen. Antigen-presenting cells are responsible for the composition of the antigen. Then, the allergen re represents a piece of the antigen on the membrane, thus training the T helper cells or lymphocytes to recognize the antigen. Having learned how to recognize the antigen, lymphocytes induce the response of B lymphocytes. B lymphocytes are responsible for producing antibodies. In this case, it would be LGE Im immunoglobulins. As a result, a mast cell is getting plastered with immunoglobulins all over its surface. Next time when the allergen contacts with human body, it already has whole army of mast cells covered with immunoglobulins, and this contact causes the outburst of huge amount of mediators responsible for manifestation of allergic reaction. On a cellular, cellular level, Young deficiency manifests itself through divergence of certain reactions within the process of interaction of antigen-presenting cells and cells helpers. The helper cells of the second type is work towards the development of allergic reactions. The helpers of the first type in their turn should inhibit this reaction. The lack of fire in the suppressive ability of T helpers of the first type on the level of producing cytokines leads to atopy. Must cells are the very cells that are directly responsible for allergic reaction. Mast cells emit a wide range of chemically active mediators that are responsible for manifestation of allergic reactions. Those chemically active mediators are chemotactic agents that attract to the area of activation of the mast cells a great number of immunocomponent cells. 
Other mediators are activators of inflammation that cause vascular distension, swelling, local tissue damage. At the last, and the last type of mediators uh, is spasmogens that influence muscles of bronchi, stimulate forming of mucus blockages that are typical for bronchial asthma. To conclude, it is important to underline the main idea, the equivalent of low acne in lungs on the level of the immune system is lowering of the suppression ability of T-helpers that causes producing of immunoglobulin and, sensi and sensitization of the mast cells. One of the unique points that is located in the channel of lungs is called Shao Shan on the sm or the small metal point. This point is a great in treatment of the diseases of the upper air passages, dissolving phlegm in lungs, lowering of the excessive atopy tendencies in lungs. Effective method of influencing this point is sujok or acupressure massage. In some cases, influencing this point can even cut short developing of non-neglected forms of bronchial spasms. Another wondrous point is the prime qi gates or guan yuan point located three tunes below the navel. It controls state of the lower heater. It is good in dissolving phlegm on the upper floor of lungs, thus soothing lungs. Another helpful point is the eternal youth point. There is an opinion that if you want to live up to 100 years old, this point should never get healed of a constant warm wood cigars moxibustion. This point has a great influence in cases of allergic tendencies in people. Now let's talk about therapy in case of acne deficiency in excess of AMA. Reflexive therapy methods include such methods of influence as acupressure, moxibustion, acupressure and quantum therapy, marma therapy, massage, diet therapy and herbal therapy. Let me also say a couple of things about the main approaches in Ayurvedic medicine in treatment of deficiency of Agni. There are two main approaches that are well described in David Furley's books, so if you are interested you can find more information there. The first approach is a restorative or toning treatment, which is very effective in cases of lack of energy in life force deficiency. It has an extreme grounding and nourishing effect. The main mistake of majority of people who do not have a deep knowledge is that they overuse toning method and use it improperly. They buy a restorative toning remedy such as for example ashwagandha and start taking it in vast thinking that it would help them to restore energy but as a result they only feel worse. It happens because they don't know that the main rules of treatment are doing everything stage-wise and restorative treatment is to be implemented only after the reduction therapy. The reduction therapy deals with factors that cause the disease connected with excess of dosha and presence of ama. The word that reflects the meaning of lakhana or reduction therapy more closely, more closely is cleansing and detoxication. Comparison of traditional Chinese medi medicine and Ayurvedic approaches in usage of toning and reduction therapies. It is typical for traditional Chinese medicine to combine those two te therapies and use them simultaneously, which is very effective when implemented by an expert and very dangerous when used by an amateur, especially in cases of excessive ama. In Ayurveda, it is considered essential to first of all reduce ama and only after that influence the state of doshas. In many cases of dosha imbalance, Ayurveda suggests a special herbal therapy uh, for soothing dosha, but it may happen that it won't help in case if there is excess of ama in the body. Let's check the rules of usage of the restorative and reduction therapies from the point of view of dosha dominance. In excess of kapha, we use strong methods of the reduction therapy, including fasting and therapeutic vomiting. 
At the same time or right after we use soft methods of the toning therapy because heavy herbs would only strengthen heavy characteristics of kapha. For pure light and dry vata type we should be careful with the cleansing therapy using soft methods such as lavements and nourishing diet. But at the same time for vata we, we use more strong methods of the toning or restorative therapy. For pitta it is important to use moderate met methods of both reduction and restorative therapy. What methods are to be used in case of vata kapha constitution which, when each dosha requires its own methods of treatment that sometimes can be mutually exclusive? Reduction or cleansing therapy includes two parts. The part which goes first is called shamana or soothing method. It is also called preliminary detoxication method. The main goal of this method is to remove ama and soothe but do not remove doshas from the body. There are cases of sama dosha when situation with doshas is complicated and usage of strong cleansing methods right away can only make things worse. The second part is called Shodhana and it is more intensive as it represents the very cleansing of the body. It removes excess of doshas when they get concentrated in gastrointestinal tract and are ready to be removed. Here we use such methods as laxatives, lavements and vomiting. The palliative therapy describes seven approaches. First one is the usage of herbs that burn the toxins or ama. Then goes usages of herbs giving force to digestion, fire or agni or yang. Then according to palliative therapy it's important to stop eating and drinking. It also includes physical training or yoga, sun bathing and wind bathing as fire can only appear in the presence of wind. Methods of preliminary detoxication are in nature aimed at stimulation of digestion fire and removal of toxins. In case of vata kapha constitution with low acne and tendency to accumulation of ama, it is better to use the preliminary detoxication methods first. What do we actually mean by ama? By ama we mean accumulation of biological in-between elements that were not transformed into energy. Also, there are also end elements of metabolism that can accumulate in the body, not being timely and completely removed. When we say that ama mixes with doshas, we mean that the metabolic waste gets combined with regulation processes disorders. In Sanskrit, this combination is called sama. There are sama kapha, sama vata and sama pita states. In some state, dosha can acquire non-typical features. For example, vata can acquire heaviness and phlegm because of ama. So if we, if we implement toning, restorative therapy, in some vata state we would only make things worse, so we should start with cleansing first. There are tastes that can, can have a strengthening effect for ama, at the same time stimulating producing of it. The most the most dangerous taste in terms of production of ama is sweet taste as it consists of soil and water at the same time it is cold, heavy and sticky. All those features are features of ama. So the intake of sweet products in the state of excess of ama would only worsen the situation. Salty taste that consists of water and fire is heavy, warm and sticky so it would also increase ama. Sour taste consists of soil and fire. It warms up, but at the same time it is heavy and sticky, so it would stimulate producing of ama. In forming a herbal composition, it is important that herbs should not be of those three tastes in the state of excess of ama. There are also neutral tastes in terms of forming of ama, such as astringent taste, as it consists more of air than of soil. It dries ama, but it can not remove it from the tissues. Two tastes that are great in dealing with ama are bitter and spicy tastes. Bitter taste works towards the reducing of formation of toxins. Spicy taste is good in splitting the toxins so together bitter and spicy taste can do a great job for, of removing of ama. Behind the taste of the plant 
there also always stands its pharmacological effect. And you should remember, remember that then composing a herbal composition. Now let's talk about diet therapy in cases of deficiency of Agni and excess of Ama. One of the main features of diet for people with excessive Ama is fresh cooked food. It is desirable to eat three times a day and reduce to zero the amount of food after sunset. It is important to control the amount of food each time you eat. Overeating is restricted. One should still have a slight feeling of hunger when having finished the meal. In Ayurveda they, can, they call it a diet which causes discontent for people who are not accustomed to restrictions. One of the main methods of detoxication is fasting. Ideally, the only thing that is allowed is vegetable juice during fasting. For people of Vata type, it should be maximum one or two days, as those people have weakened tissues already and they should use this method softly. For Kapha type, the fasting can be prolonged to week or even longer. Ginger juice would stimulate digestion. The appropriate duration of fasting for vata kapha is the in the between directions for pure vata and pure kapha types. Symptoms telling us that there was an improvement after fasting would be good appetite and clean tongue. Once you notice the symptoms, you can stop fasting and start using herbal remedies. It is allowed, it is not allowed. I'm sorry to use the method of cleansing. To people who suffer from the extreme deficiency of energy. It is better uh, for them to skip fasting to start right from the medicament therapy. Upgraded version of diet therapy module Vedapulse includes, includes various medical diets that can be used in your practice as many patients can be reluctant to follow an unusual Ayurvedic diet and be more satisfied with classic one so you will find there a lot of medical diets. Here you can see a classic medical diet which is used to stimulate Agni. Before usage it should be modified, modified to suit the individual constitution type of the patient. One should not eat a lot of fruits. It is important to exclude sweet fruits. At the same time the patient should eat more fruits that have a warming effect and hot energy. It is important to pay attention to the fact that there can be certain contradictions in understanding of the nature of fruits between Ayurveda and traditional Chinese medicine. Vegetables are good for removing ama, but it is better to use the vegetables after they underwent thermal treatment, as weak acne is poor in digesting of fresh vegetables. There are certain contradictions in op opinions of different specialists on the topic of influence of sprouts in the, in the state of low agni. Some specialists claim that sprouts contain enzymes helpful for increasing of agni. Other specialists tend to think that sprouts would only take energy from the body. I tend to think that it works both ways and that therapists can recommend sprouts only if he or she is sure that it would be suitable for this concrete situation. One shouldn't use sweet vegetables and mushrooms as they accelerate producing of ama. Crops is an ideal food for increasing of acne and removing ama. You can use various types of crops except those that are of a heavy guna and sweet taste. In Ayurveda it is recommended not to experiment but to use the mix of long rice and shelled golden gram as this mix is considered as a best remedy in treating of emptiness of yang. Wheat is great for soothing wind but as it is of a sweet taste for vata kapha it would increase ama so it is better to avoid pasture based on wheat. Legumes, except golden gram, increase ama so they are not desirable in cases of excess of ama. Nuts and seeds are very heavy and oily so they, they are also not desirable for people suffering from low agni and excessive ama. 
The features of milk food match the features of AMA, so they are not desirable, so one should exclude them completely. In cases of weakness of the body, there are problems with stomach, microflora, it is recommended to use acidophilus pills or settled not salty whey. In traditional Chinese medicine, meat is highly recommended to people with young deficiency. According to Chinese specialists, there are certain types of hot meat. The hottest type of meat is mutton. It warms up spleen and stomach, restores young of kidneys and gives energy. Then goes venison and some of the sea inhabitants. According to Ayurveda, all, the, all of the animal products cause producing of ama, so it is essential that you recommend to exclude meat completely on this stage of the treatment. Oil puts out the fire, so it should be used in a highly limited proportion in internal usage. It is allowed to use ghee in small proportion. As to external treatment for removing a vomit, it is better to use oils of a dry nature, such as mustard and linseed oil, especially for kapha constitution. Almost all the spices are allowed, but it is important to check the area of the spice. As a rule, it should be of a hot or at least warm energy. One of the most dangerous spices is sugar, as it causes metabolic syndrome and can also cause the coronary heart disease, so it is better to exclude sugar completely. Salt also stimulates producing of ama, so you should reduce the amount of salt. The nature of rock salt is lighter than the nature of sea salt, and sea salt stimulates producing of ama in a greater way. All of the hot spices are good for correction of the state of acne and stimulate it. There are no severe restrictions for beverages. It is better to use warm beverages. Use an equal proportion ginger, cinnamon and cardamom and also classic herbal teas for stimulating agni. Herbal therapy for agni deficiency. Detoxicating herbs in Sama Vata Kapha. As we already mentioned, sweet, salty and sour tastes increase ama. Astringent taste is neutral and it will dry ama, but it is not able to remove it. Bitter and spicy tastes are great in removing ama. We should use herbs which are of a fiery nature as they have spicy and bitter tastes. Those herbs and spices are red pepper, it increases pachaka pita, decreases kapha first of all phlegm, black pepper, it is of a softer nature, mustard, long Indian pepper pipoli and so on. Let's take ginger as an example that would help us to see why it is important to check constitution of a plant. Dominating taste of ginger is spicy. Guna is of a heavy but dry characteristic, so it dries the phlegm. Virya or energy is warming, and as ginger is of a sweet vipak, it is important to use it, in, to use it not longer than for two weeks because the accumulation of the sweet vipak in a long-term usage of the plant would only weaken the treatment. Indian long pepper uh, is of a spicy taste, light guna, warm energy, which is very good. But at the same time it is also of a sweet vipak, so it is not for a long-term usage. It decreases vata and kapha and good in cases of weak agnya of lungs. In Ayurvedic therapy, there is a very effective remedy which is very good in stimulating Agni and reducing Ama as it, is, it, is, it increases Pitta and lowers Vata and Kapha. This composition is called Trikatu. It consists of black pepper, red pepper or pipali and dry ginger. It is recommended in the amount of 1 or 3 grams, 2-3 times a day. It goes with warm water or tea and honey. Another herb that is important to mention is asafoetida. It is a, of a spicy taste, light nature and hot energy, so it has a strong but at the same time gentle way of increasing fire. There is a direct recommendation to people with vata kapha constitution to add asafoetida in food, in soups, cereals, salads and so on. 
Another unique composition is triple triphala. It contains haritaki that reduces vata and kapha in neutral for pitta. Amlaki that reduces vata and pitta substantially but neutral for kapha. And babhitaki that is that also reduces vata and kapha and neutral for pitta. Though this composition is hot. I'm sorry, though this composition is not helpful in increasing Agni, it removes Vata and Kapha greatly. And you can recommend to use it with honey and ghee as a great laxative remedy, but only after Vata and Kapha have been prepared to removal. David Frawley also recommends to use tonic for restoration of Agni. It contains asafoetida, tricato, stone salt, cumin, black pepper and edge vein. It is an extremely effective remedy in deficiency of Agni. As for traditional Chinese medicine, the main remedy for stimulating Agni that every specialist would recommend is Cordyceps. Cordyceps is a special type of fungus that parasites on caterpillars during the hibernation period. During the hibernation fungus mycels grow through the caterpillar and take all the nutrients from the organism, thus growing, spreading wider and wider and acquiring those special qualities that are essential in treatment and have a great anti-tumor effect. It is also a great remedy for acne deficiency and young deficiency in lungs. Another group of effective remedies in traditional Chinese medicine is represented by medicines based on young red deer antlers. As you may see, it is of a sweet and salty taste and warm energy. You should use it only on last stages of the detoxication therapy, thus getting its great restorative effect for reproduction system and kidneys. In traditional Chinese medicine, they also use the seahorses extract. As a rule, they, they do not use it independently, but only in compositions and as one of the elements of medicine. Aconitum carmichaelis is considered in traditional Chinese medicine as one of the most powerful remedies. As it is toxic one, it should be... Ex one should be... Ex I'm sorry, as it is toxic, one should be extremely careful when using it. Using it. You won't find herbs of a quantum group in the market. They are available only in herbal compositions in small proportion. It is also helpful to use such herbs as a desert ginseng. Here you can see its description. And Eucomia almoides, but only after the detoxication therapy was com completed. Only in that case you would get a great restorative effect. Eight Treasures Tea is also recommended as a great restorative remedy. It consists of logan, formula of logan as you may see, kapha pita minus vata plus, which is not good for pita, but it is also of a hot energy. Raisin, its formula is vata pita minus kapha neutral, which works towards producing avama. But other components such as cinnamon, dry ginger roots, red ginseng, licorice in general would be effective in restoration of yang. But you should also use it only after having removed dharma. One of the famous Russian physicians, Dr. Lebedev, gives an effective composition for restoration of agony for people having low pancreas and stomach secretion that can be used starting from the early stages of treatment. Here are two herbs in the compositions that have anti-inflammatory effect, and at the same time they are not that strong in increasing of acne or removing ama, so in case there are no inflammation processes, you can exclude these herbs from the composition. Most of the herbs of this composition are of a spicy or bitter taste and hot energy, that is why it is effective in stimulation of acne. Now let's see some methods of physiotherapy and marmotherapy. Here are five points that are routinely used for restoration of young in the empty cold syndrome. One of the points that can be helpful for restoration of young is called gates of life. It is used in case of deficiency of acne and emaciation of young. It is connected 
It is connected with functioning of the lower heater and helpful in healing disorders of the reproductive system. This point is easy to find and it is located under, under a spinal process of the second lumbar vertebra. If you find it hard to use method of acupressure to influence this point, it would also be effective to implement quantum therapy and maxibustion. This point is more lateral to the left and right from the previous point. It is also effective in restoration of young and reproductive system as it is connected with functioning of lower heater. Outpost of young on the lower back is located under a spinal process of the fourth lumbar vertebra. It is situated on the wondrous vessel Dumai which is it in its turn connected with young channels. And again, if you find it hard to use acupressure or maxibustion, we recommend you to implement quantum therapy. Outpost of the prime chi energy has a great effect in restoration of young of kidneys. This point is located on the wings of the pelvic bones under a spinal process of the fifth lumbar vertebra. Palace gates of spirit point is located in the center of navel. This point has a great restorative effect influencing both the lower and the middle heater which means it is helpful in increasing of acne of gastrointestinal tract as well as acne of reproduction system. The best way of treatment would be maxibustion with basti reservoirs filled with hot oil and quantum physiotherapy. Thank you for your attention. We hope that the information would be useful in your practice. Goodbye.